This is Ted Drozdowski, Senior Editor of Premier Guitar, and we are at the Anaheim NAM Show. It's Winter NAM here, and I'm at the Falbo Guitar Booth with Frank Falbo himself, who has brought a lot of interesting new instruments to uh, NAM, and I'm going to let him tell you about them. Frank, why don't we start with this guitar in your hands? Well, this is the new Boxer. Um, it's a double cut. It's junior-ish. This particular one happens to be made with a western red cedar back, so it's very, a guitar, actually, the body is red cedar, so that there's no top on this one, but it's... Um, it's very light. It's a 5.75 pounds in total, um, and so I love this. What you working with cedar? It's just very stiff and lightweight, very musical. Um, but I do these like the Greg Mara signature with mahogany bodies and you know rosewood fingerboards or ebony. You know, I, so I have I have a variety of what I do. But the basic premise is a really good double cut guitar that kind of behaves like an old one. And how do we do that when we can't get access to these woods or nor can we get access to a guitar that just has lived for 50 or 60 years? And so then comes in this bridge design and this is kind of the, the, the nuts and bolts of why I got into this style of a guitar. Um, is I have you know my intention bridge design, this patented acoustic thing and where I leverage torque and I work with torque to drive the guitar body or the guitar top with more energy. And in this case, the strings are attaching into the piece that's in the body. That is shooting and pushing this direction, not this direction. But then, of course, the strings wrap over, they come around, they go that way, and that's pulling in this direction. And between all of that, what happens is that piece actually pushes negatively against the, 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 the anchors, right? So what we get is the guitar, the vibrations go into the body in a more phase aligned way. And if you strip away all of the garbage that I just said, the guitar acts the way a guitar would act if the amp was a lot louder. It's just more resonant, it's more responsive, um, but it's responsive to the notes you're playing. So the strings become more a more effective motor, right? They're just pounding the guitar with, with phase aligned uh, vibrations. Um, so in this one, I happen to have some P90s. Um, these are, I wind these with George Cardis wire. Most of you guys know me. I do R&D with Fishman for the Fluence pickups. So a lot of my guitars will be Fluence equipped. Um, Fishman doesn't have a P90 and, uh, at, at this time. And so I'm winding these, but um, you can look more, you know, and let's check me out on social. I'll explain a little bit more about what these are. But uh, this one also happens to have a Madagascar rosewood board and then some Brazilian rosewood P90 covers that I made just because what do you do with Brazilian rosewood scraps, right? <laughs> You know. <laughs> and there's some really distinctive fine touches on it too, cosmetically. The uh, the um, speed dials. Oh yeah, these are cue parts. Really huh? Yeah, these are cue parts, so you can always kind of get a piece on top of them where that kind of complements the body. And so I don't know how much it comes across on camera, but there's a good amount of sparkle in the top of this. You yes, know, in the there is a lot of sparkle, and actually too, the inlays are hip. Yeah, these are fun. These are mosaic pins. I'd like to take more credit for these than I can, but knife makers use them, and so it's already built like that. You know, you get this thing, and it's got all these rods in it, and it's a pain in the neck to cut them. But I hadn't seen anybody really use them as inlays before, so I have them here on the fingerboard, and then I have them, uh, you know, up top. Yeah, they're really beautiful and striking. Thank you. Um, shall we move on to the new bass you brought here as well? Let's do it. All right. Yeah. Uh, now, I already know this bass sounds killer because you gave us a little taste of it off camera. But, uh, Frank, why don't you tell us about this bass, man? So, this is the Intuition bass. And people have tried to combine fretless and fretted basses for a long time. And I had this idea uh, on how we could pull this off. And the first premise that others have done in the past is to take the fretless part and raise it up so that it matches the same height of the fret tops. So, if you're, if you're a fretted bass player and you just want to, you don't really think about it, you go up and down and you know it feels the same across this plane of the playing surface but then uh, if you're going to play fretless you have to always fret on the fret right so what i did is i took the intonation point on the fretless side and i shifted it about the size of a human finger so what it means is that you can just shut your brain off and play the fretted notes and just keep playing up to the fretted ones and you'll be in tune so everybody who's played it it's like I just tell them, don't think about it, just play it regular. And, uh, you know, they do, and, uh, and it makes sense to them. In fact, I had, there was a, 
an Austrian blind bass player who was playing this. Um, that's when I got like a little choked up. You know, um, she is blind and it made sense to her and she was playing in tune just by going up and down and not having to think that she was supposed to, you know, obviously move up to where to where the fret would be. So that's what we've done. We've shifted this forward, we've shifted this back. Um, this is our, our uh, uh, proprietary hardware that we're making um, individual string bridges so I was able to, you know, I could position them where I wanted to position them. But, uh, but yeah, that's how, that's how this works. So it's very intuitive, hence the term, the intuition base. Oh man, that's a really intelligent process. Uh, thanks for explaining how you rationalize that. And why don't you tell us about the base itself? Yes. Yeah, so other than, you know, the obvious. Yeah, so I like, you know, this is again a cedar, uh, western red cedar quarter sawn uh, instrument. I make them out of all different kinds of woods. It just so happens that that's what this is. But it's built for balance, so the body shape and everything, and the ergonomics, the way, way it fits against your body. Um, this one happens to be very lightweight. But at the core, one of the things that makes this base so powerful is the Fishman Fluence bass pickups that we worked on. And so in these pickups, I have, I want to have time to demo all these sounds but you can check it out you know on Fishman um, there's almost every sound in here there's soap bar basses they can be split to single coil there's a vintage fat voice there's a hi-fi voice that's got some scoop in it mid contouring and then there's a hi-fi voice where you take the scoop away the contour comes out um, this is one of the most versatile sounding and best sounding bass pickup sets uh, that I've ever you know had the pleasure to, to, to work with so that, that's what goes into this, the electronics-wise, yeah. Okay, why don't you show us, run through the electronics a little bit, and I'll hold a mic up to you so we can narrate the process a little. Sound good? Sounds good to me. Okay. So that's like the modern, you know, voicing. If I flip this switch, I go to like a very passive, fat vintage. And so I've, I've done nothing to the amp, you know, but this is just right here. Bring it back to the bridge pickup. I can go back to this, uh, you know, ultra hi-fi tone, but without the mid contouring. Um, I've got a coil split right here. So there's like a little bit, it's a little more Marcus Millery when you got two single coils because the window, the string window is narrower. Um, but yeah, there's just, I mean, there's almost no sound that you is, you can't get out of this, dub, you know, this, this pickup set. Yeah. What's this bass price at? And the guitar as well that we've already yeah. seen. Everything I do is usually falls between like three and four thousand dollars. So like the guitar we looked at has some features on it, right, that are going to bring it up to thirty six. But that that boxer like double cut guitar, um, that one starts at uh, at twenty eight fifty for like the most stripped down like bared bones, you know, mahogany, mahogany, one pickup, you know, yeah. stuff like that. So I have down and dirty versions of these things, you know, but then they can get up there uh, in range. So the bass, the intuition bass in this condition. In this particular format would be $3,600, and but again, there's some room to play up and down depending on the materials and you know how fancy you want to get with it. So Frank, tell us about what else you have hitting your hand. A lot of you guys know that I I do a lot of things. You know what I mean? I can't sit still, and I'm I, I get involved in a lot of different stuff. So if I'll I'll just give you guys the quick rundown. You've seen that I do ergonomic, um, you know, six, seven, and eight string. That's the Alpha Ergo guitar. That one's the single cut design. Right next to it over here is my double cut design. Um, so that's when I get into the extended range and the multi-scale stuff. Uh, you've seen that. That's got our monorail, our proprietary hardware on it as well. Um, this is a baritone that's now available. I just made this one for Steve Stevens. He takes it out with Deadland Ritual. That's his new project with Geezer Butler. And so they use a baritone for a couple of songs. And um, he's a Nags guy, and all of his Nags are perfect. But they don't make a baritone. So I said, no, hey, I'll make you one. Um, and so that's that. But that's available. It's not a Steve thing, right? But you can get my baritone uh, without his you know, appointments on it or everything. Uh, those are readily available. Um, here's a T-style. Here's an offset style. I'm doing these as like production instruments. So this uh, will be the first production bolt-on, actually, from Falbo. Um, so you'll have this in a lot of different formats, like a tele neck pickup or a P90 or a this or a that. But you'll see the whole complement. And the same thing with the T-style, set neck and bolt. These bolts, what I'm doing with the tele bridge is that I have enough room on a tele bridge to accommodate a, a fan, a multi-scale. 
And so that'll be, again, sort of a user's choice. Would you like it in multi-scale or would you like it in straight scale? And then those next, when I make them at the factory, you know, my shop, they'll be sort of, you know, swappable, you know, so that we can, we can get through a bit of a more production flow. Uh, you guys saw the Greg Mara signature version of the boxer that I had over there. You know that I do the hollow bodies. That's been around for a while. And really, I started this company based on this intention bridge design for the acoustics. Again, you've all seen what that means and how that affects an acoustic top. But uh, yeah, just this whole complement of guitars. You find me on socials and you'll see all the stuff I have available. But what we did for the hardware is there's Apollo hardware. And it's a guy I work with, Remco Meyer, in Australia. And we're making very, very high quality precision hardware that covers multi-scale stuff, tremolos, um, hardtails, individual monorail bridges, basically the whole complement of modern stuff. The stuff that's hard to find out there if you just go to some catalog. Um, but that stuff will be available. Uh, it's already available online. In the United States, we're actually going to be probably, uh, we're going to work with distribution even with Mighty Might. If you uh, remember Mighty Might, they make uh, all kinds of awesome guitar bodies and necks. And I'll be producing some content with them, sharing with you guys some of my tips and tricks on how to set up a guitar and cut a nut and how do I make the tuners aligned and how does Frank do the fret ends and, you know, all my little secret tricks and, and, uh, and tips on how to get your guitar in tip-top shape will be over there on Mighty Might's uh, Facebook page. We'll be able to find that. Well, thanks for sharing all that with us, Frank. Really appreciate it. And thank you for tuning in. We've got a lot of video coming from Winter Nam, so keep coming back to PremierGuitar.com. And why not go to YouTube and subscribe to our uh, video channel as well. Later, Gators.